a smart card is basically just a plastic card like this that contains a microchip which is capable of storing and very importantly processing information. Now cards like this are often used for authentication purposes so you'll see them being used as key cards to open doors for example or to log into a PC without having to type in the password uh, or even payment systems right because modern day credit cards and debit cards are also smart cards. Because we're using these cards for authentication purposes their security needs to be very good and that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So first of all, let's take a look at how you might expect a smart card to work. So let's say that we have some sort of building, right, a secure facility, and it has a door that can automatically open and close. And right next to that door is a smart card reading device. And so what we can do is we can come in with a smart card, we walk up to the door, uh, we read the card at the reading device, we just hold it against it, it uses NFC, right? We don't have to like stick the card into it, it's just a modern device. So we hold the, the card in front of the reader and then the door opens. At least if it's a real legit card, if it's just a piece of plastic, then of course it's not going to work. So what's going on when we hold that card in front of the reading device? Well, when we do that, the reading device powers the card through electromagnetic induction, kind of like wireless charging on a mobile phone. So the microchip inside the card activates and takes an identification number from its memory, right? So in this card is an identification number. That number is taken by the microchip and the microchip sends the identification number to the reading device. The reading device takes the identification number and goes Oh, nice, that's a valid number, so I can now open the door, right? This is how you might expect the system to work. And it could work like this, but it would be terrible for security. The reason for that is because we are sending the identification number, which is kind of like our key to get into the building, through the air to this reading device. That makes this card very easy to copy. You see, if someone comes in with their own reading device, uh, this is a calculator, but just use your imagination, this is now a reading device, they come in, they, you know, steal my card, they can just scan my card like this, and now they have the identification number, right, because anyone could read the card, anyone could obtain the number, now they can make their own card with that same number and use it to get into my secure building. In fact, what you could do is ha take one guy if you're a criminal organization i don't want to be giving tips to criminal organizations but you know this is how it could be done you take one guy you put two nfc reading devices in his pockets you send him out into a heavily populated area like a bus or a train the guy walks through this crowded place and as he walks through he scans all the nfc cards that are in people's pockets anyway we're getting off track so how does it work? Well, how do we get this to be secure? Well, we use something called a challenge response cryptography system. So how does that work? Well, basically, the reading device will give the card a certain challenge. And if the card is able to complete that challenge, that proves that it's a genuine card. Inside the card, in the memory of the card, we now have two numbers instead of just one. We still have the old identification number, but we also have a secret code, a secret key, if you will. If it's really a key, depends on the encryption system that we're going to use, but let's just call it a key because it's secret. This key will never leave the card, okay? It'll never be sent to any reading device. If the card gets read, it'll provide the identification number, but it will never provide that secret key. But there is one other place that knows the secret key, and that's the system we're trying to log into. So in our case, with the door opening system, uh, the reading device that opens the door does know the secret key. So the secret key is only known by the card and by the system that we're trying to access. Nobody else. Right? If, if anybody else knows this key, we can throw this card in the garbage and get a new one. Now what's going to happen is we walk up to the door and we hold our card in front of the reading device, it supplies the identification number, 
the system takes the ID number and says, OK, so this card says that they're, you know, this number. Let's see if this card is actually that card. Then the system will take the secret key that corresponds to this identification number, which it knows, remember, it takes that secret key and it also generates a random number, OK, just for this specific login attempt. Right? Every time we log in, this number is different. It's called a nonce, a number used once. This random number is combined by the computer system with that secret key. So it sticks them together and it produces a hash. Now, if you don't know what hashing is, hashing basically means you take uh, a string of text, you manipulate it in some way, and the output is what appears to be unreadable garbage, and you cannot reverse it uh, back into the original string. So it's a one-way operation. And for every string that you hash, it produces a very unique output. Then what the computer does is it's, you know, it puts that hash aside for a bit and it's going to send the number that it generated, that random number, it's going to send that to my card through the reading device. And it's going to ask this card, could you please take this random number that I made, combine it with the secret key that you know, right, because you, you say that you're this card, so you should have that secret key. Combine those, produce a hash and send the, the, the resulting hash back to me. So the card takes the random number, it takes its own secret key, combines them, produces a hash, and it sends the hash to the reading device, and the reading device forwards it to the computer system. The computer system then compares the hash that it made itself, and it, com takes, it compares it to the hash that was made by the card, and if they're the same, then it allows us access, it opens the door. Because if these hashes match, it means the card must have that secret key. Well, if it doesn't have the secret key, then it wouldn't be able to produce this hash. Even though it has the random number, the other component we need to make this hash is a secret key. So the card has now proven that it has the secret key without actually sending the secret key to the server, to the computer system, which means the secret key can remain secret. Even if someone would intercept the hash, the hash can't be reversed. You can't use the hash to derive the secret key. Now, there are other systems you can use for this, other cryptographic challenge response mechanisms, but they all use the same principle. And that principle is that there is some sort of secret key in the card and a secret key in the server, and the card proves that he knows the secret by doing something, by performing an operation. And that way, the card's secret key never has to be sent and always remains secret. For now, Let's take a look at how this actually might work in the real world. So I've actually made a little program on my computer. Uh, one program simulates an NFC reading device and the other program simulates the card. So let's just take a look at how this actually, what happens. So as you can see, we've opened up a folder here. Now these are some audio files for the, the, this video that I'm making. And then here you can see two programs, right? Two executables. One of them is called Smart Card. And one of them is called reading side. So this program reading side simulates the device reading the card or the computer system or, you know, the thing that opens the door in our case. And then a smart card simulates, well, the smart card. OK, so first of all, let's click on this program. So as you can see, the program starts printing on the screen waiting for authentication attempt. So every second it prints this line. And that's because every second this reading device or this reading program in our case is checking if there is a smart card to read. Right? So in this case, that's not there because we haven't opened the smart card program. So this is just waiting for a smart card to, to come in and authenticate. Now let's open up our smart card program here. Right, so we have both programs. It says press any key to start authentication. So normally you hold the card in front of the reading device, you stick it into the reading device. In our case, we have to press a key. So I'm just going to press that key and then some interesting things are going to happen. You can see here, authentication ID, authentication ID detected, 994314 is the ID. And then it says some things over here and then it says authentication successful, access allowed, right? So the reading device read the smart card and it allowed access because apparently this was a valid card. So let's see what it did, really. Well, let's see what the program did. So you can see here, input, 
which is nonce combined with key, is this, right? This is the combination of that random number and the secret key. So you can see this one used that same combination. So it used the same random number because I've got that from this program, and then it combined it with its secret key, which it knows, right? Because I've programmed that in, because this is a valid card. And then the output hash, the result, the, the you know, what comes out here is equal to this. So then the output that was created by the smart card was sent over to this program, and this program compared this one with its own result and concluded that they are the same, so access allowed, right? Now let's see what this software does if we just change the the key of this the key of this smart card a bit. Right, so let's just get rid of all the software here. Uh, and let's open up the code for the smart card program. So this is the code, the C-sharp code that I'm using for the smart card program. But here's the secret key, right? The secret key is just programmed in because I was too lazy to like put it in a file and read it from there and all that kind of stuff. So it's just programmed into the software. And here's the authentication ID that it's using. So I'm going to keep using this authentication ID, right? But I'm just going to change one character of our key. I'm going to change a 7 to an 8 right there. One character, okay? So say that someone was guessing our secret key and they got it wrong by one character, right? Which is actually a pretty good job considering how long that key is. But anyway, one character is now wrong. So let's save that, okay? Then what we're going to do is start up our reading program again. Oh. Let me first reset something. So first of all, I need to take this text file, which is called data transfer, and just make that empty because we're using this text file uh, to transfer the data between the programs. So the programs will dump the information they send to each other in this file. So the file needs to be empty before we start. So the file is empty now because it still contains some stuff from the previous run. There you go. We can get rid of that. Now we're going to start the reading side again. So you can see it's waiting for the authentication attempt right there. Now we're going to go into the code for our uh, uh, smart card program. We're going to fire that up. You can see, press any key to start authentication. It's detected over here. You can see it's using the same ID. And boom, that right there, access denied. Right, it's not letting us in anymore. Why is it not letting us in? Well, let's see. The input nonce combined with key is almost the same. It's using the same random number, right? Got that correct. But then it's not using the same key, right? It's off by one digit. Well, that's, that's an eight right there, and it should be a seven. And if you look at these hashes, you can see that the hash generated by the smart card is very different from the hash generated by the reading device, just because one digit in our key was incorrect. Now, of course, this, this software that I made is not suitable for any kind of real-world authentication system. It's not secure. Right? It's not secure for many reasons, but it shows the principle of how this works pretty well. So as you've been able to see, smart cards like this are more complicated and more clever than you might expect. They don't just store an identification number or store any kind of information. They actually have the capability of performing cryptographic operations, and this is what makes them so secure compared to like a MagStripe card or a barcode printed on a card or things like that. It's because those methods just hold information on a card, but this card doesn't just hold information, it processes information and it can prove that it's genuine by doing that. So the next time you open a door with a key card or log into a computer system with a card like this or make a payment with an EMV enabled payment system, you know what's going on behind the scenes. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course, thank you for watching.